I'm like praying that I don't get splashed. Okay. Are you wondering whether you can replace your old electric fountain pump with a solar one? Have they come far enough that it's going to give you the same effect? I was wondering the same thing. And the answer is yes, you can. But there are some caveats. So I thought it would be fun to do a little test. I have this like pool of water here to show you. And I have my electric pump and I have my solar pump and we're gonna put them side by side just so you could see the differences. Uh, my name is Amy and over at prettypurpledoor.com I help home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. And a few weeks back, I posted a video about my DIY pondless water feature, which I definitely recommend you check out after you watch this. It's an easy project you could do in just a few hours. And originally I did this project uh, for about four years ago and since then uh, solar pumps have come a long way so i wanted to test it out and just see can i get the same effect will it work for just a small backyard water feature uh, what do i have to look for what specs are important and how do i get this to work so here i have my electric pump and it plugs in to an outlet in the wall. And this is what I used for years. I don't have the fountain part on the tip. And then I recently purchased this little solar fountain pump here. And I had to use tubing instead of like the hard plastic to run it where I needed to, but pretty much the same thing. And then this has a wire as well. Let me just pull it over, like a little, do a little fishing here. Uh, this wire. So that's the first point, I guess, is just because it's solar doesn't mean it's wireless, which is strangely what I thought in the beginning. And it's not true. It does have a wire because it has to hook to a solar panel. So here's the solar panel that it came with here. And all that you do with this pump is plug it right into the solar panel. And it also comes with this awesome battery backup and this is the key my friend if you're going to go solar you need to find a solar pump that has a battery backup and the cool thing about the one that i have is that it not only has this battery backup but it hooks together with the solar panel so it goes from the solar panel to this battery backup and then to the pump and what it does is as the sun is absorbing it will actually be charging this as well from the solar panel. So you know, it comes with a plug too, so that you could plug it into an outlet and charge it like in the beginning. But I haven't used that outlet plug since I've bought this, since the first time I charged it. It literally charges off of the solar panel. So I just leave them both together and I kind of chain link them together. And if the sun goes down, it's awesome because the battery kicks in at that point. But I wanna show you first what it's like without the, uh, without the battery backup. So let's exclude the battery backup right now. And I'm just gonna take the pump and I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't get the battery backup. So it comes with this little plug. I, I don't think all of them are like this. This is just particular to the, the pump that I have, but you just stick the prongs together and then you tighten this here. And then you're supposed to set this at like a 30 or 45 degree angle or something like this. And then it will make the pump go. But as you can see, it's totally not working because there's not a lot of sun. And I mean, it's not, it's cloudy today, but it's a beautiful day. So this is sort of the reality of the solar pumps, especially if you don't get one with the battery backup, is that if the sun is down, it's just not gonna pump. And if that's okay with you, then no problem, then go for it. I kind of wanted the same effect uh, as my electric pump, which I had on a timer and it was set up really nice and I could turn it on automatically when I got home from work and it would shut off at 9 p.m. and things like that. So it didn't really work for my purposes, but I just wanted to show you that. And if it was sunny out, this would be working, but as soon as the sun, or even if you like walk by this panel and shade out the panel as you walk by, the pump will stop momentarily. So it's very interesting. But this battery backup, it just, it's just awesome. So there's two 
pieces on this and what you do is unplug the pump from the solar panel directly and you're going to put the battery backup in to here first. So put it in, push it in really tight and then screw this down. And then this other one that's coming out of the battery will go into the fountain pump. And this is the setup that I've been using for the last month or so. And it's been honestly like way better, way better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I was really, I'm really impressed. You could see it's, it's going already in this bucket here. So there it is. And this is basically right now, it's running off of this battery backup that's charged by this panel. Let me just stick it in here for a second. Okay, so I wanna compare it to this. And I also have the specs here. So let me just give you a little rundown on the specs of my pumps. They're not exactly the same, but I got uh, the equivalent, uh, what I could find equivalent in my electric pump to the solar pump. So. This electric pump is from Harbor Freight. This one with the battery backup, I feel like I paid over a hundred for the pump, for the actual pump itself with the panel. And then the backup might've been another $50 or so on top of that. Don't quote me on those prices. I'll put a link in the description of this video so that you can actually see the real prices. But this is from Harbor Freight. And this one was online. I got on Amazon through EcoWorthy is the brand. Um, the, the only thing that's really different is that the solar pump is 160 gallons per hour. And this is actually 264 gallons per hour. So the gallons per hour is basically just a measurement of the size of your water basin. So if you have a big pond or something like that, what they recommend is that the water in the pond or in your pool will circulate at least once per hour. So this gallons per hour is pretty equivalent to the size of the pond or the water feature that you have. Now I'm putting this in like a bucket that's like, I think it's like maybe a 10 gallon bucket. So these are huge in comparison to what I actually need. And then uh, the only other thing I measured was the cord size. So on the solar pump, the cord that goes from the pump to the actual solar panel is about 16 feet, which is a good distance. And they also sell an extension cord that you could plug in. It's another 16 feet. So if you're putting it in a shady corner or something and you need to actually get this panel to a sunny area, you might want to pick up that extension cord. And this one that plugs into the wall, it actually is about a 12 foot cord. So let's just take a little look at what the difference between the two is. So I'm gonna actually put this one in as well. So I have both of my pumps in, in this silly water basin. <laughs> and I'm like praying that I don't get splashed. Okay. Very good. So I have a diverter on this one uh, because this was far too strong for what I needed it for. So I have this little switch here that I can twist that will change the amount of water that comes out of the top and it just sort of shoots some out the side instead. So I'm going to actually turn this diverter completely off so we can get a good look at how strong the pumps are. And you can see here that this one looks quite a bit stronger than this one, but from what I've found, uh, I don't really notice much of a difference, probably because I had this on half. I had this on about half like that. So yeah, so since I wasn't using this pump at full strength, this one worked pretty well. So I guess what I would recommend based on this is if your electric pump that you're using now is actually full strength, you might want to get a solar pump that's a bit stronger or at least matches that gallons per hour because that's kind of the only big difference here is the gallons per hour. The max lift is about the same. So get an equivalent gallons per hour in the solar version if you're using your electric pump on full speed. Hi, Sally. Sally decided to walk right through the video and say hello as usual. So that's kind of my synopsis of but if you're going to get the solar pump, get a battery backup. I'm gonna put the link to that eco-worthy one inside of the description below. So definitely check out 
the eco-worthy one because the battery backup is just amazing. I've never seen anything like it. It's really a game changer as far as solar pumps go. And also check out the video that I'm gonna post right now that will take you to another video where I'm gonna go over all of these things, the GPH and the max lift and just sort of explain what these measurements actually mean and which ones you need to pay attention to when you're going to purchase a pump. So I'll see you over in the next video.